Okay, so we're looking at the function e to the negative x squared. Uh, with any function, when we're trying to find its domain and range, we have to realize that domain is the input for the function, and range is what we get back after putting something into it. So when I'm looking at domain, the question we're trying to ask is, what type of inputs can be put inside of this expression? Now, since the variable is inside the exponent, we know that we can take any number, so in this case e, and raise it to any number and get an answer back that's a real value. And so for that reason, if I look at e to the negative um, 5 squared or e to the negative square root of 2 being squared, put anything we want in for x, that number exists, our domain is going to be all real numbers. So in this case we would say our domain is all real numbers, and so that's the r of the two slashes. Or you can write it with integral notation, saying that any value from negative infinity to positive infinity can be put inside of the function and the answer given back. Now for the range question, the range is the values that the function can take on. So when I put a number inside of here, that number I put inside is something from the domain, it's something from all these reals. What this equals to, so this equals to some number, those are values that are inside of its range. So now, then we have to look at, well, how is this function behaving as we put numbers inside of here? And that answers the questions about what the range is, what type of answers do we get back when I put something inside the function. So I put a number in for the variable x. So looking at the range question, we need to examine the types of function we're dealing with. So we've got this exponential function on the outside, and we have this x squared on the inside part. So things to kind of look at is what's going to happen as x goes towards negative infinity, as x goes towards zero, and x goes towards positive infinity, I have a feeling it's going to explain a lot about what the shape of the graph is, and that explains the, the y values for the range. So if we start letting x be a very large number negative, so looking at this case right here, we're going to end up with having e to a negative, negative large number being squared. And so I'm not putting an actual value in here because we want to say, well, what, what is the values of y you're going to take on? Well, we know e to a negative uh, negative large number squared, that squaring is going to make that a positive inside of that exponent. So we're going to have e to a negative, and since this becomes positive, we're just going to say that this is going to be very large because I squared it. And so what does the function e to the x or e to the negative x look like? That's going to answer what this does then for us. So when I look at a base function that's very similar to this, e to the x, we know it had this kind of exponential growth. So we're looking at e to a negative very large number. So when I put something that's negative and very large, so say negative a billion, negative a trillion, in that exponent, that's on this side of the graph. So I see that as x goes towards negative infinity, e to the negative x squared is going to be going towards zero. Will it ever equal to zero? The answer to that is no. And the reason why is because if we try to have e to the negative x squared to equal to zero, and we solve for that to see if does it ever go down and touch the x-axis, the method for solving this that you learned in algebra was with the variables in the exponent, let's take logs. Well, when I start taking logs or natural logs, the log is not defined when x equals zero. So there's nothing I can put inside of here that gives me back zero as an answer. Now your calculator will round it to zero, but it never equals to zero. And so what we can say is, well, part of the range, it looks like it's going to be approaching zero. It will never equal to zero, because we could just kind of show here that it can't be equal to zero. And because this is a positive number, so if I look at this, this is a number raised to a negative x squared. We know nothing in the exponent is going to change the sign of that number that's being raised to a power. I know that it always has to be positive. So at this point, 
examining what happens as we go to negative infinity leads me to the conclusion that the range values are not starting at zero but are as close to zero as we want and we want to see how far it extends. Can we have any value in the range go off towards uh, a positive infinity value? That's kind of the question mark, is where we're ending. And so if I examine, skipping the middle part, if I examine what happens as x gets large, <coughs> as x gets large, that negative sign we realize doesn't play any role because when I square it, I'm still going to have e to a negative very large number. So as x gets large, we see that our function is again going towards zero. So it doesn't tell me what's the largest y value we can get at this moment, but we do know that if I were to graph it, what the tails look like. As x gets very large negative, we're going this direction. x gets very large positive, we're going this direction. What happens in the middle? Now, since this is not undefined anywhere when we talked about the domain, our guess is that it's going to do something like this in the middle. It's just going to come up to a maximum and come back down. So where that maximum occurs, well, that we can do by just kind of some investigation. So if we're taking e to a negative number, because whether I put in x is negative or positive, I'm going to get the same value after I square it. I'm going to make this whole expression large, this gets large, if we can get this number as large as possible. So right now it being negative means that negative, whatever I put in here is going to stay negative unless we let x equal to zero. And so if we let x equal to zero, we're going to see if we graph this on a calculator, that that's where the maximum of that function occurs. And so in this case, e to the 0 is a value of 1, I see that my domain is a maximum of 1 when we let x equal to 0. And so answering this domain question can get interesting because you have to really play around with the whole function. In this case I just kind of looked at some key points, some key characteristics, because I know what x squared does and I know what e to the x does. And so I, I knew those were some investigating points. So if we had like a rational function or square root function, I may be investigating other values of the domain inputs to see what happens to this graph and its output. So here is our range. And keep in mind that the range, this represents the outputs or y values that the graph can take on for that function.